us. I've, I've had many, many requests for this particular ride. Um, now, it is based in Chessington World of Adventures because, you know, why not Chessington? I've done everything about Alton Towers, I've done everything about Fort Park, but I'm forgetting about Chessington and Legoland. So today we are focusing on Chessington. Um, so this ride really did not last long, and the ride I'm going to be on about um, sits as Terror of the Two... No, no, no it doesn't. It sits as Tomb Blaster, which used to be Terror of the Tomb, which then was also called Fifth Dimension. Now, it started off as the Fifth Dimension. Now, many of you might be thinking, the Fifth Dimension, what is the Fifth Dimension? How could we have the 5D version of a cinema? No, it wasn't a cinema. It wasn't even close to a cinema. It was about a ride um, where you met this guy named Zapomatic. Um, and he was a troubleshooter. Now, if you don't know what a troubleshooter is, because not many people did know, um, a troubleshooter is a guy who fixes your problems or solves up a solution. Now, during the time of 19... No, 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 not 1993, 1987, people had no clue what this ride was about. Only because it was about a troubleshooter and you were in a TV screen. I mean, come on, it's, it's very logical to this day, but thinking back to 1987, there wasn't much technology. And if you saw that, like, 1980s was when the computer was a thing, so of course, like, 1987 is just about to see people work on computers and everything. Um, so, troubleshooters really did not appeal to the guests, and that's why this ride closed and got refurbished. It was all about the attendance of the park. Now, Fifth Dimension was a little ride that took you around um, a little world of the computer. Fifth Dimension, yes, 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 you got it. Um, and the fact that you met this guy named Zapomatic behind the TV screen because you crashed through it. Um, there were some questions about if you'll meet these ghosts, not ghosts, they're like bugs and slimy swamp. Um, and Zapomatic basically... He gets his Zapmobile and he, he shoots them, goes pew, 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 pew. Um, and basically you're on your way with that really annoying music, not like I listen to it every day. Um, so, yeah, this fifth dimension, many of you might be thinking fifth dimension. It wasn't actually a fifth dimension like I've just mentioned. Um, so that kind of, it kind of kills the picture of it, which is pretty sad. But it's the only ride that got us to where we are, the Curse of Autumn Manor and different dark rides in the UK. That is only because it used animatronics like no other. Um, so you had stuff at Disneyland in like Florida, which used some really good background animatronics. It has some really amazing features to it. Um, and it was the world's first when like Fifth Dimension came to the UK because John Wardley built it and then Chessington took over it and Hitachi, the... Uh, Guys who do the computer screens, or the TV, what do they call it? Uh, Hitachi Company, Remote Control Company thing. Um, they basically uh, sponsored this ride. Now, it was quite cool how they sponsored it, because they go, our computer error, 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 because they repeat themselves, saying their computer error is still there. Um, and they also promise you a nice ride in the fifth dimension. Um which really didn't turn out well. Um, but it was just an amazing thing to just see this ride have animatronics like it does today, because today is nothing like the animatronics we used to have. But if you look at stuff like Bubble Works and how Professor Burbs Bubble Works used to be at Chessington, that is so much more similar to the one in the fifth dimension. Now, like I said before, the ride did close in 1993 and got rethemed to Terror of the Tomb and then got rethemed to Tomb Blaster. But Terror of the Tomb, um, it just wiped out the whole thing, basically. There was no more good animatronics to it. But the fifth dimension only lasted... 87? 88? 89? 90? 91? 92? Six years. That is absolutely nothing for a dark ride. No, seven years. No, 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 no. Six years um, for a dark ride. That is pretty concerning. Um, you rode it when you was a kid. I forgot how old people are. I never rode this ride, because I was born in 2007. Ah! Um, <laughs> let's just say it's like 30 years after. Not to make you feel old or anything. Um, but yeah, it was closed and got rethemed to Terror of the Tomb. It was a dark ride. It was a Mac Riders. Um, or Mac Rides. 
It was also put in by the Two Swords group and was built by John Wardley, like I said before. So yes, John Wardley built the stuff in Disneyland, he built stuff in, he built everything in Orton Towers. Like, you literally look at the whole Orton Towers site, it's like John Wardley all over it. Um, and its theme was cyberspace. It was a prototype dark ride, uh, transit, which basically means it's just a dark ride that goes around. And I kind of like how it stops and keeps going. Um, and the animatronics, like I've already said, and I can't boast about this animatronic, is just so significant. I'm not joking. You had Zapomatic with his little... You could see the animatronics arm, um, like, mover thing. Um, but that was, like, in plain sight, and it wasn't very clear. But the fact that they got animatronics back in those days, it led us to the Curse of Ultimana today, because without his animatronics, where would we be? Um, you wouldn't have stuff like the pepper, mirrors, or whatever they call them. No, so it had five vehicles to it, like the one Tomb Blaster. No, it doesn't. Tomb Blaster's got way more. Um, it does a 1,200 riders per hour, and it's seven minutes long. I don't know how long Tomb Blaster is, so I can type it up in a minute. Um, Fam, <coughs> Fam Ventures 2 says, Because the staff weren't keeping doors shut and lit up, uh, lit up the dark areas and plus things kept going wrong and people didn't really understand it because it didn't have much of a story to it. No, it did not. Um, and that's my other thing I want to say. So Hitachi in 19, well, when it opened, so it's 1987, they supported the ride. And it was about Zappomatic, who was a troubleshooter, like I've said before. And he's meant to zap these bugs. Now these bugs, like me may know, um, are like in all computers today. Now, not many people knew about computers at the time because they're fairly new, seven years old. Not many people, not many schools have them, so not many younger children will have them. Especially when they're definitely aimed for younger children. But it makes it makes younger people more aware of the computer world. Um, but the only issue with that is, like they've said before, and like you've said before, there is no story to it. You go through the computer world, but before all that, they go, "Oh, they did it again." Uh, something happened and you've got to close the ride. But I'm like, the ride isn't closed. And how are you always the third car getting lost? Like, doesn't anyone actually count this stuff? It's pretty concerning. You're the third car, third, they can't count. Um, but yeah, you have this third car thing and they tell you about how uh, Zappomatic got you there first. And then you go through the slimy uh, swamp and then uh, Zappomatic then kills the bugs. And the slimy thing, I don't know what the slimy thing's doing in a TV screen. I, I, what, what? Just why? Um, but the fact that, you know, I can't, I can't just boast, I keep ghost boasting about the animatronics, they're just too good. I cannot lie. Yep. Totally did not just get this from Bertie Bassel's all sorts. Anyways, um, so it then got replaced by Terror of the Tomb. Now, Tell the Tomb, or last renamed Forbidden Tomb, I suppose it says here, how many names does this thing have? Um, and it took over Fifth Dimension. And now, not many people wrote Tell the Tomb, I don't think I did either, because it opened back in 1994, so a year after the Fifth Dimension closed, in the exact same spot, don't know if it had the same layout, let's read it, shall we? Um, all music was composed by Graham Smart. Okay. Who, who's Graham Smart? Shout out to Graham Smart. Good music guy. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, ancient, so the ride showed featured animatronics and practical fe uh, theatrical effects. So it had a little bit better, it was 10 times better than Fifth Dimension. Um, with an ancient Egyptian theme. So we're kind of close to that Tomb Raider, uh, Tomb Blaster aspect because Tomb Blaster's Egyptian. You've got Tomb Raider, which is also Egyptian. <laughs> Look at Legoland, also Egyptian. <laughs> um, so the story followed a corrupt tour uh, guide named Abdab, Ab Abdab, it's literally his name Abdab, um, plotting to steal treasure from within. Why, why are we helping someone steal treasure? Um, oh, Fam Adventures says, it was much better uh, when Terror of the Tomb opened. It is not great now, a bit like Jewel, they need to change it up with more story. They do, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so to steal treasure from within the tomb. Before he is captured by mummies and sacrificed in a dramatic hard rock concert. Well, how is this any good for like sacrificed by mummies? What am I gonna do? Put toilet paper in. Um So he's sacrificed in a dramatic hard rock concert fi uh, finale. Did I, did I just say that right? What? Hang on. 
before he is captured by mummies and sacrificed in a dramatic hard rock concert finale. What is a mummy doing in a hard rock concert? Especially after being sacrificed. Oh, my brain hurts. Um, Terror Tomb operated for seven years. I'm just, I'm just reading off like Wikipedia. I'm so sad. Um, Terror Tomb operated for seven years. Of course it did. Uh, before closing in 2001. I wonder what else operated for six years and closed in 1980, whatever, 1993. Um, uh, as the horror content was considered at odds, it was a horror. What? A concert with a mummy is a horror? Right. Um, so, as it says here, as the co horror concert, no, content was considered at odds with Chessington's new family target audience. I swear Fifth Dimension was family orientated. <laughs> um, a lot of the rise sets were recycled for a uh, replacement attraction Tomb Blaster, with the exception of the animatronics. So that's another load of animatronics just like thrown away. You've got Fifth Dimension who didn't even make it back to First Dimension. And you've got Tomb Raider who's like fifth, like animatronics got thrown away. What else would we need thrown away? I mean the whole ride thrown away, that'd be very good. John Wardley's like, why just got like, killed? So then we move on to Tomb Blaster, which is currently there. And oh look, there's more pictures for Tomb Blaster than there is any other ride. Um, Tomb Blaster is a dark ride in the Forbidden Kingdom. Of course it is. I mean, not like I've been talking about it for the last... How long have I been in the side one? 11 minutes, 37 seconds. Um, fan Adventures put, it was the 90s, the rock music was sung and placed by a member of Electro uh, Light Orchestra, Electric Light Orchestra, if I'm right. Okay, that makes more sense. It kind of links into the fifth dimension with the electric sign, but yes, again, still, mummies, rock, concerts, really. Um, I never knew Egyptians had rock concerts, and especially electric. I don't know, I don't know what they're making out of the sand. I'm very scared to go. Um... So, Tomb Blaster is a dark ride in the Forbidden Kingdom area of Chessington World Resort. Do I have to keep mentioning that? It originally opened as the Fifth Dimension. No, really! Like, like, not like I knew this. Um, no, really, I'm, I'm not meant to be that bad. Um, a dark ride based on a story of... Why are they telling me about the Fifth Dimension? Why can't they tell me about Tomb Blaster, like they said? Uh, the Forbidden Kingdom, with no capital letter, um, in 1994, and the ride, they're still telling about Tower of the Tomb. No, give me Tomb Blaster. Description, finally, thank you. Anyone under 1.1 meter? Seriously? Seriously? For telling, goes description, goes anyone under 1.1 meters must be accompanied by an adult. How significantly, like, wow, okay. Right, in August 2015, so fairly recent, a tomb Blaster closed for undisclosed reasons. The tomb is blasting back. Oh, the Tomb Blaster strikes back. Ooh. Um, it then underwent a minor refurbishment. How do people know this? It's been closed. During the closed season, with a new laser gun system, an ultraviolet scenic treatment and altered audio, the refurbished ride debuted during the annual pass preview weekend of 2016 to a negative response. Uh, general response from guests as well as fans of the ride criticised the unprofessional nature of the new lighting and audio alter, uh, alterations, Cite, uh, citing missing sound effects, many anim uh, animations still broken, no really, bring back fifth dimension, uh, missing pieces of the sets and excessive light spillage that reveal the areas intended to be covered by the darkness. I wonder what other ride had that issue. That like recently uh, recently opened. I can name one. Begins with the T. Ends with R. Wow, well, it's got a bunch of words between that. It's that Alton Towers Resort. Oh, I wonder... Oh, wait, no. No, 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 no. It wasn't the curse. No, it wasn't. It was Jewel. Boom! Look at that. They strike back. But Jewel had an issue with its... Like... Exits, fire exits, showing the light for you know how funny that is. You can literally see the outside. It's not, it's not a metro of a haunted house anymore, and is it? How many doors do you need? In 2020, the attraction was revamped with a new story overlay, new soundtrack, and light yet again four years later. With some of the targets removed, the new story for the attraction is that the guests are being recruited to ride the, the spout ride wrong. 
uh, ride the tomb of the cursed the high priest. Okay, so how many times can you alter an indoor dark ride? Like, from the fifth dimension, Tomb Blaster, or Forbidden, no, Tomb Raider, to Forbidden Raider, or whatever it was, to then Tomb Blaster, to then refurbished it to you're being cremated, to <laughs> you're, you're, you're being sentenced to um, go to a curse on the highest priest's order. How many more times? That's the more sinister, from a TV show to a curse of the high priest. And they haven't changed the ride whatsoever. They've just put Egypt in technology. What has Chessington done? But yeah, no, in my four opinions, Tomb Blaster is a good ride. It is fairly, fairly long, and there are some aspects to it which I'd say would have to be improved. And especially the bit where you just stop for a very long time and get so much points. You stop like at this cur like this cobra bit and you're just there and you're just like, oh, I keep clicking this button and the cobra keeps turning around. Let's, let's keep doing it. I finally find out I've got like 15 million points. I come off with the most points to spam the gun. And then half the guns you have don't even work. So there's a person next to you getting like millions of points. And there you are going, I can't do it. Can't do it. Too hard. Too risky. Literally, they just need to ease up the gun's um, trigger because at the moment, there's some that just go poof. And it's like you have to have some really pure strength. Not very family friendly, is it? Um, so, yeah, I think that concludes today's video. I think I've ranted enough. Oh, and also, the duration of uh, Tomb Blaster is actually... No, Tomb Blaster is 8 minutes. Whereas you have the same uh, ride operation, like the same ride layout with the 5th dimension for 7 minutes. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Anyways, guys. I am going to go. Please tell me what you think of the fifth dimension, Tomb Blaster, Tomb Raider, Forbidden Raider. I call it, I call it Forbidden Raider now. But I like calling Forbidden. Forbidden Forest. Forbidden, no, Forbidden Valley. Forbidden, whatever it's called. Um. So yeah, what, uh, I've lost what I'm going to say. Comment down below what you thought of any of the rides I've mentioned today and what improvements would you like to make? Because I would like to make a lot and we have to get rid of that really long waiting time. Uh, Fan Ventures says, these days there is no uh, uh, originality so they make rides from films and books. When John Wardy made rides they were new and original, uh, originally made up by imagination. They were made up by imagination. Like Fifth Dimension had such a good imagination to it. But unfortunately, he had nothing to do with the ride. It was Hitachi, who was the guys who do the computer TV remote things. Um, they were the ones who took over the ride, which I think was pretty... Because eh, that's what kind of made the story unimaginable. But the whole ride layout is just so imaginable. Cannot lie. All sorts are amazing. Yes. It looks like Candy Crush all sorts. <laughs> um, anyway. That is probably one of the most weirdest rides uh, that has gone under refurbishment so many times in so many ways. It is just amazing to see how a ride can go from an electronic thing to an Egyptian themed. Um, now, John Wardley, uh, what's going to happen when Jumanji, Gruffalo and Room on the Boom is out today? Okay, so this is a good question. Now, Jumanji, I would say... It'll take them a little bit of a while because everyone remembers Jumanji from like nineteen eighties when the but uh, when the film or nineteen nineties I think it was when the film was there. When the room and the broom, the Gruffalo go, I have really got a no, the room and the broom has to go. I'm not joking, I can't stress that as much. Nobody goes in that ride. Why are you in such a huge queue? And where's the fun in it anymore? You go through it, okay, but Trimmel Tunnel is actually working. That is good. I like walking through that. But it could be something like Hex, and I've stressed that before. It has to be not a walkthrough, because it doesn't it doesn't give an effect anymore. It's just that. Now, there are some bits on the first one that really made me scared, where over Hocus Pocus Hall, which was originally there, I would say that that made it... It didn't make it as scary, but it made some really good theme to it. Um, but when we had uh, Room on the Boom, it's just too technical, and it's just like, why? You're walking through this thing, it's really boring. It's like you're in, your out straight away. And the the um, sound is so low for a enclosed space. It's really annoying. And you get so many people in at once. Especially on, like, really bad days. It's just like, why? 
So yeah, that's one thing that I hate about Room in the Boom. And I literally hate it because you walk through it and you're out. And it's like, there's no factor to it. It's just that there's no monitor and how quick you go. And you're being pushed by other people. Um, Fam Ventures says, they made Jumanji quick and badly so they can have a world first. Yes, they did. And they always do. Look at the Smiler. So the Smiler was built... And then there was so many issues with it. Like, even 2016, the issues were huge. I wonder why. They were trying to get out the world first because I was in competition with another USA park. Even with myself, with Colossus. Why would they be in competition with themselves? I don't know, but they would like to make a scene, don't they? Um, yeah, so when you look at Jumanji, you've got the world's first B&M, uh, inv B &M flying coaster. You have the world's first Jumanji coaster, uh, flying themed coaster. And the fact that it's the first ever Jumanji world, it's just like, yeah, they've, they've definitely rushed it, you can so tell. Because before I went to Chessington, like, a, two years ago, they were digging out, and this area was just for picnic. And then they made a they made a mark and said, Jumanji's going to go here, but we didn't know it was Jumanji. All we knew is there was going to be a big, big lion in the middle, and a bunch of truck going around it. Nobody knew anything about Jumanji. And then we found out it was Jumanji, and it was just like, wow, okay. But the whole world were like, we need to go here, we need to go here. And now, there are speculations about Project Horizon at Alton Towers also being Jumanji, but I think it's kind of concerning. Hi, Harvey. So, yeah, I'm a bit... Uh, uh, Fan Ventures says, Hocus Pocus was much better than The Room and the Broom, and Bubbleworks was better than The Gruffalo. You have got some really good taste. So, yes, Room and the... Hocus Pocus, everyone could relate to. Everyone's read the... No, everyone's watched the movie. Everyone's watched part two. No, movie two, part two. Oh, well. The Room on the Broom. Okay, I, I literally used to read that book all the time. And I get it's aimed at the uh, smaller ones. But we've got Lego Land for that. Why can't we make Room on the Broom, Lego Room on the Broom? Not a new double inverted coaster that we probably don't need. Or we do need. Many of us need. But yes, again, it's another world, like, UK's first trawling coaster. Um, why can't it be, instead of, like, Ferrari? Because that's not, that's not very junior based it's more of a old people's no young no oh no i've just said something for you wrong. um it's more of a person or in the older generations sort of car like why would anyone be known about cars um so yeah we want to should definitely go to legoland or we should just get eradicated we should just eradicate we should just blow up the whole manor which is there um then we've got the Gruffalo. Now, Gruffalo was alright, but when Imperial Leather came along uh, with the Bubbleworks, which was previously before Gruffalo, um, they kind of got rid of every single animation that we saw alike to Fifth Dimension. So Fifth Dimension had really good animations. You look at Bubbleworks at the same year, 1980s. They also had the exact same form of animation. It was a water ride like it is now. Um, but, but Gruffalo really doesn't... It doesn't appeal to me. You've got a book. You read it every day. I've, I literally used to read it every single day because I love Gruffalo Crumble. <laughs> no, I know. Um, <laughs> no, I just love reading about Gruffalo Crumble and how Gruffalo Crumble was a um, thing because it was it's just turned on its head since then. It was like, my favourite food is Gruffalo Crumble. Like, what? A mouse can eat a Gruffalo? Um, so yeah, that's pretty funny. But Room on the Broom and Gruffalo really don't work. I don't like how we've got Elmo either. Elmo could be something different. Actually, no, I take it back. I barely see Elmo anymore. Um, but, like, Room and the Broom, you need to get rid of that. And Gruffalo, I think it should be Bubbleworks again. Because if it isn't, then where's the logic in it? It's like, okay, you've got Gruffalo, you've got Room and the Broom, you've got two books, but you've read a book, and then you're going to go on this ride, and it's the exact same layout, the exact same thing, you know what's coming, it's nothing new. Um, Fan Ventures says they need to spend less money on rides and maintain the rides they have. Vampire could do with smoke like Alton, Ta Alton Manor. Yes, it does. And the fact that they refurbished the um, soundtrack to the Vampire quite a few years ago, I think it was 2020. It was closed for that 2019 season, if I was correct. Yeah, again, <laughs> if it's closed, the only other... Oh, wait, hang on. That was also closed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically they had absolutely no good... Roller coaster because we didn't have Jumanji. <laughs> we had Dragon's Fury. Dragon's Fury is like really, really off and off. And, no, on and off at the moment. If it's like raining in the morning, it's like, it takes forever for it just to come on. And you see it being tested and you ask the people if it's going to come on. They go, no, you 
you then look on the app and you realise it's open. After they told you no, you go over there, it's like 90 minute queues. Um, not even Spinball Wizard has that. Like, what is the wide operation in that thing? Someone's clearly going something. Uh, yeah, someone's done something wrong anyways. But I agree with you, they need smoke effects with the vampire, and they need more theming around that area. Now, I agree, I agree they've got it between the trees, because the trees are quite good, I, I can't lie with that. But when you have that environmental aspect, and it's like, it needs more theming, the fog machines will be amazing. Because it lacks theming now. I don't know where the um, old tombstones were. You've got Dennis Domenish, you've got Bubble Works, Professor Burp lost his bubble, something like that, I don't know what it was. Um, you've got Zapomatic, um, went to a different dimension. I don't know where those tombstones are gone. I don't even know if they're in the uh, vampire queue line anymore. But it's really sad to see. And if you look on, like, I think it's on websites, I don't know what it is, um, if you look on like different websites, you'll find that they are tombstones from Chessington, and I have no clue where they are, which is pretty concerning, and every time I go, I can't seem to find them. Um, Fam Adventures says, the theming helps when you're waiting a long time in the queue. Yes. Now, the difference between the Cursor Automatic is that the queue's always continuously going, no matter what. I mean, I have never been in a curse where it's been like really, really busy, and if it even has, it's been raining, so it's kind of true because the smiles goes where are you gonna go you're not gonna go oblivion because nobody likes oblivion in the wetness said that out loud didn't i um and then you don't go spin uh trust the final spin jam because nobody oh wait they're not there so next year we'll be like yeah hey, let's go to the curse of Manor and see what new stuff's there nothing's gonna be new but we roll with it and it's shaded because it's in between trees now that's the difference because when you've got the rain and you've got the smoke it really adds effect to the whole ride and the queue line when you've got the smoke it also adds effects because it's mysterious it tells you that something's in here that's not meant to be or something's in here that want, doesn't want to be touched you look at different movies and you've got that perspective of yes castle yes clouds yes fog boom you've got this dark creature inside um but without that fog effect, you've just got a really lively ride, which just takes you on a journey around trees and tombstones. And a guy playing an, or, like, an organ. It's not even a Dracula. That's pretty, that's pretty funny. And I swear that organ guy was like broke at one point. And then it got refixed. It got broke again because someone knocked. I remember someone knocked the head off it. <laughs> someone literally knocked the head off it. Someone threw a sh uh, shoe at it and got kicked out of the park. Um, so we had to then redo it again for 2020. It was so funny. I, I didn't. I witnessed that, and that was like the most funniest thing in the world. Um, I'm like, geez, your head's rolling off. Heads will roll. That's a song. Um, but yeah, that was. Just, it's just so weird how animatronics we have so much little effect, and they've brought in such a huge book but it doesn't need to be a ride because if books are rides you know what's coming like room on the broom room on the broom has lost a hat or cat or fog and a mat and then you've got the griffalo oh griffalo crumbo whatever it is uh, fan ventures 2 says great live i'm off to speak again soon like and subscribe to the sky uh no to the sky yes to me um guys and also for us uh we're at journey to hell this weekend Journey to Hell, good luck. Tell me how it is. I've heard it's very, very, very scary. So yes, I am going to go too, guys. Um, unless, unless people want to ask questions. But I don't know if they do. Um, so yeah, I am going to go. I, I will be open with my DMs if you want to message me. Um, and yeah, remember to subscribe to BakerStreet.co's YouTube. Remember to follow me. Because, I mean, come on, we're on Instagram. What else can I say? Um, and yeah, bye guys. Smile always.